thank you very much. Can everybody hear me from, from here if I, if I stay sitting down? Um, thank you very much and thank you for the opportunity to speak and thank you for the invitation today. It has been absolutely brilliant to meet all of you today and have the chance to, to chat in the workshop. So I do really appreciate it. And I, I always say that, um, you know, I always learn as much in these environments as, as I hopefully impart. So thank you very much for that. It always refreshes my experience. Um, I'm going to start by talking a little bit about myself. Um, hopefully that will become clear as to why. Um, I'm going to talk about organising and, and some of the processes and, and the tools that we use for organising. Um, I became an organiser 16 years ago. Um, I started, as Rena mentioned, on the early years of the organising academy, although I have to say not as early as Kevin Lucas, who's sitting here. He was earlier than I was. Um, so and that was about 16 years ago, which shows you, you know, it was only 16 years ago that the use of child labour in the union movement was still widespread. <laughs> Um, hope, uh, you know, that practice has now been wiped out, I'm happy to say, um, they no longer use child labour. But anyway, why did I become a union organiser? Probably for the same reason that most people became union organisers or become union organisers or get involved in their union. I wanted to change the world. Um, I saw injustice all around me. Um, I wanted equality for working people. Um, I wanted to redress the balance of power. I wanted to take back power for working people um, when I could see it being stripped away. Um, I was very idealistic. I was probably very naive. Um, but I was certainly very determined that I wanted to make a difference. That was the point that I started from. And there were probably lots of paths that I could have chosen at that point um, to get involved. I could have chosen a political path. I could have got involved in the voluntary sector. Or there were lots of different things that I could have done. But I was very drawn to organising, and I was more than drawn, I fell in love with organising, let's be honest, it's been a love affair that's been going on for a long time. And why organising? I, I fell in love with organising because of the way that it promises to deliver that social justice and, de, and promises to address inequality. Organising is not about fixing things for people. It's not about seeking out problems and saying to people, I'm going to be your knight in shining armour, I'm going to come along and we're going to make this right. Organising is about getting under people's skin, it's about moving people, it's about empowering people, it's about watching people who believe that they can't do anything to change their situation become confident to take action and actually really make a difference. Um, so it's not about having power for yourself, it's about helping to empower other people and that's what I was drawn to, that was, that was kind of the ideology that I was drawn to. And there were a lot of us around at the time who were drawn to that through the Organising Academy, so I'm very proud of that. So the, the interesting thing about that is that if you take all of that ideology and naivety and energy, you have to somehow translate that into a practical way of making a difference. Um, and so over the years, as my practice has developed, um, it's been about how do you practically, on a day-to-day -day basis, implement that ideology? What do you need to do? You need a set of tools. I've talked a lot today in my workshops about the toolkit that we have as organisers. You need to be systematic. You need to talk to people one-to-one. -to -one. You need to map workplaces. You need to identify issues. You need to find leaders and activists. So the practical application of what is a very kind of you know, high-minded approach to doing things and an ideology about how we want to change the world needs what is sometimes some quite monotonous practical implementation when you're you know, updating that workplace map for the 50th time, when you're having your 175th workplace one-to-one -one conversation that week. Um, you know, the actual practical implementation of organising can be quite boring and quite monotonous. Um, but it is important that we are systematic, and it is important that we remember why we're doing it. So having that ideology is important. Um, and what we do is, through this process of identifying issues, organising workers, finding activists, um, you know, building our workplace maps, we build people's confidence, we build to a process, we build to a point where people are prepared to take action to solve their own issues. And there are, say, basic steps. Those are people who were in my last session, I talked about the organising cycle. There is a process that we go through, identifying issues, organising the workplace, educating people about being union and moving them to a point of <coughs> action. Now that organising cycle was up on a, an OHP, probably, mm -hmm. um, on the first day that I started the Organising Academy. And I put it up 
as a slide today. It's no less relevant than it was 15, 16 years ago. That is the, the basic cycle for organising and all of the principles that you need to follow. And I guess my reason for highlighting that is that um, the, when I've seen organising can be very frustrating, partly because of the monotony. It can grind you down, it's hard work, it's long hours, it's going out in the middle of the night, it's talking to people who don't want to talk to you, it's having knockbacks. Um, it can be very, very hard work. And quite often I've met people in this country, in other countries, in different unions, who tell me that they've tried organising and it didn't work. Or they tried to get workers to take action and nobody was interested, <laughs> nobody wanted to get involved. Um, or there are no issues in that workplace and so we've given up and we've moved on. You can't organise that workplace, it's impossible. And when I've started to unpick that with organisers in various unions, often <coughs> the reason why it hasn't worked is because they've missed bits out. They haven't identified the issues, they haven't done the one-to-one -one conversations, they haven't mapped their workplaces, they haven't built their organisation, they haven't developed their activists. Um, and we think, we still seem to think that there's, there's some kind of silver bullet, there is some kind of knight in shining armour coming over the horizon who's going to rescue us and make this organising work, when actually it's getting the basics right which is important. Every single one of you in this room knows those basics and knows how to do it. It's the application of those basic tools and using that toolkit which will make your, make your organising successful. There is nothing glamorous about organising. There is nothing sexy about day-to-day -day organising. It is hard work. But if you go out and you apply the principles that, that you've learned and you use the organising, the toolkit, the tools in the organising toolkit, then you will be successful. If you miss bits out, you won't be successful. So I hope that doesn't sound too kind of, just trying to kind of share my experience. And I think Innocent are doing a fantastic job, I have to say. I've had the fortune to work a little bit with Unison and Northwest over the last um, few months, and I think there is some amazing work that's happening and some brilliant practice and a real commitment. If you have that commitment to actually organising and changing the way that you work, then that, that will take you a long way. So, um, but it's just about keeping going, and I think my message to you would just be to keep going, don't give up. Those workplaces that you think are impossible to organise are not impossible to organise. Even if you've tried once and failed, you need to go back and try again. You need to redo that map. You need to have those one-to-one -one conversations. Um, and it will work if you apply those principles. So hopefully that's not too much of a lecture. Well, I was telling people in my one-to-one -one workshop not to lecture people. Um, but that's kind of, you know, it is that keep going. And draw on the support from each other. It is what events like this are so important. It's so great that Unison have organised this because it is about drawing on other people around you and getting that support and getting your network together because this is, this is difficult work and you need all the support you can get. So um, thanks again for inviting me and um, yeah, it's been a really, really good day. So.